Like, hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. If you are new to my channel, my name is Gore and I'm your Bistec Nurse from Southeast England. Before I will start my vlog for today, let me thank my current subscribers. We are now almost 4,000 subs. So if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. In today's video, we are going to do the Ask Gore episode 3. So this is the compilation of frequently asked questions for carer and nurses role here in the UK. So please keep watching. So before we will start the question and answer, let me just give you a disclaimer. I am not working as an immigration consultant, nor I'm working in the home office, and definitely I am not a recruiter, okay? Just to make it crystal clear. So my answers to you are based on my experience and of course through research okay so let's start so some of the questions here are in Tagalog but definitely I'm going to put an English translation down below okay so for the first question this is coming from Leia what if po nursing graduate not a board passer in the Philippines papasok sa UK as a carer then ipo pursue to become UKRN any idea po anong gagawin para maging nurse in UK Magkano po kaya magagastos? So Leia, as far as I know, yes, NMC are um, accepting candidates that are not board board passer. However, um, I have read a thread before in a Facebook group that they find it really difficult to continue with the NMC application because of the verification process. So I am not sure how it works now. So I would advise if you join some Facebook groups out there that can advise you, especially those who have experience um, in pursuing the, their NMC application despite not having a professional um, qualification in their home country. But if you're going to ask me concerning the costs if you pursue your nursing career here in the UK, so for the qualification evaluation fee, that would cost you £140. For taking the computer-based test, it will be £83. And in taking the English proficiency test, either IELTS or um, OET, so for OET, it will be £329. And for IELTS academic, it will be £195. And not only that, you have to and prepare also for your OSCE. Well, anyway, this will be um, covered by your sponsor or your employer here in the UK, which costs £794. And if you have to retake it, the partial receipt cost is £397. And lastly, once you pass your OSCE, then you have to pay £153 for NMC registration, okay? So if there's anyone out there who successfully applied for NMC as a UK nurse despite not having a professional registration back in their home country, please comment down below so we can help Leia. Okay, for the second question, this is from Maria Luisa B. Bukayo. Hi, ma'am. Ask ko lang kung ilang years usually ang contract ng senior care worker. Thanks. So as far as I have researched Maria Luisa, um, the minimum that they give is two years but mostly they give three years now in your sponsorship and the maximum is five years okay the next one is from Kate Dizon hi hello <laughs> is there a high chance of sponsoring my children even if I'm a solo parent yes of course so if you have watched my video regarding skilled worker dependent dependent visa partner and child so it doesn't matter if you're married or unmarried as long as your children are still eligible they are below 18 and you have met all the requirements to apply them as your dependent definitely you can still sponsor them to join you here in the UK so for further details please finish my video regarding that um, topic and if you want more information please search from the government webs website here in the UK, www.gov.uk. All right. So the next question is from CS. Hello again, Miss Core. Hello. My question karin dati asuki ka ha. 
Do you have any idea po about cost of living in Walton on Thames, Surrey? Will I survive as single na matipid din? Thank you. Although I'm not really familiar of the place you mentioned, Walton on Thames, but I've heard of Surrey, but I've never been there. But with regard to your question, if you can survive as a single person, being as a thrifty person you are or economic person you are, yes, you will survive. I think like what I can advise you when you are starting here in the UK is for you to live in a shared accommodation, shared flat, shared house, whatever, because it will save you a lot of money. It doesn't matter really where is your location, it's a matter of budgeting and of course your lifestyle. If you are earning £2,000 but you are living more than what you earn, of course you will not survive UK. But if you are economic, as what you have said, CS, definitely you will survive even here if you are a single person. Okay, next question is coming from Chidra Nuzor. Thanks for the info. So this is from the video Senior Care UK Interview Questions. Please, if you get an email from a care home scheduling you for an interview meeting and asking you if, it is if it's convenient for you, is it improper to tell them to reschedule as it is not convenient for you. Well, Chidra, no, it's not improper. It would be more an unprofessional of you if you don't inform them, okay? So I would advise that you immediately contact this interviewer through a phone call or through an email. So I will share to you an email script that I found online that may help you in informing your interviewer. So this is how the email goes. So you will address um, the person that is scheduling your interview and then you start um, i'm reaching out to inform you that unfortunately i need to reschedule our interview for the job title and that, that we had arranged for the date and time at um, like an interview location or through a virtual meeting and then on the second paragraph you have to provide your reason um, make sure it is really a valid reason and it's a legit reason and then on the third paragraph, could we reschedule for, you suggest a date and a time, and then you say, let me know if that works for you or if you would prefer another date or time this week or maybe next month. And then you will um, enumerate your available dates. So I am available for days, dates and time. And then lastly, I sincerely apologize for any inconvenience and appreciate your understanding in advance and you can also add in the beginning of your email to tell them that you are enthusiastic or excited for the incoming interview unfortunately because of um, unforeseen circumstances you are not able to you can you won't be able to make it in your um, scheduled interview so you would provide your reasons there and I think that is a very good sample here um, that you can pattern your email to your interviewer. Okay, so hopefully that helps Chidra. Okay, for the next question, well, questions. These are coming from two different people, but they have similar thought. So first one is from R.D. Ridona. Hello, Mom Cor. Hello. I just want to verify if you have any idea as a dependent work visa, working in NHS for two years, you don't need to take any English test and eligible for NMC registration question mark thank you and more power and the second one is from Jean Therese Kapda hi ma'am I have a question lang po I hope you notice yes I noticed your questions um, I may not able to reply instantly to your messages or comments but I definitely um, read your um, comments it's just that sometimes I'm so busy or forgot to reply. That's why I try my best to, to do this kind of vlog, the series vlog, um, answering the frequently asked questions. Okay? I read somewhere po kasi na once nag work ka for one year in an English speaking country, and then you want to apply as a nurse in the UK, you may not be required anymore to take the IELTS or OET. Instead, they will consider your one year stay mo in the English country as enough to suffice the English requirement. Do you have idea about this book? 
Okay, so basing on what I have read from the NMC website, these are the types of evidence that they accept to apply as a UK nurse. So the first one is if you have recently achieved the required score in one of the English language tests, IELTS or OET. The second evidence is a pre-registration nurse, midwife or nursing associate, qualification which was thought and examined in English. And the last evidence that they accept is recent practice of at least one year in my majority the English speaking country. Okay, so the third evidence is definitely answering your question. So it is a yes, but I think it's best for you to contact NMC and clarify to them because I haven't heard of anyone really that have done this. But if you are one of my viewers and you have done this process, submitting only a certificate um, proving that you are working as an employee of a certain company here in the UK because it is an English speaking country of course if you have tried that and you have successfully um, finished your qualification or um, pursue your qualification as a UK nurse please comment down below okay it would be a great help but basing on what I know um, ladies Jean and RD I just based on what I have read from the NMC website okay but I think it's worth a shot okay and I I would advise you to contact NMC about it because as far as I know you have to provide a certificate that will be provided by your employer saying that this um, person is working with us as a blah 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 healthcare worker or whatever job in this month year and up to present then um, they will certify that you can speak and write English that's what I know so please give it a try okay for the next question this is from Jocelyn Kabigin hi ma'am informative po yung mga videos niyo po oh, thank you very much ma'am may may suggest ka po ba na care homes kasi gusto ko po sana mag apply thank you po so before I'm going to name drop all the care home companies that I can suggest that you will apply for let me just say this please don't hold me responsible if in case that you are going to be assigned to a not so pleasant care home working in a care home sometimes is a matter of luck as for the care home companies these are the top five largest care home companies here in the UK Number one is HC1, second is Four Seasons Healthcare, third one is Barchester Healthcare, fourth is Care Home Care UK, and the last one is Bupa. But let me add to you Care Homes Group Limited. Okay, so these are the care homes that I can suggest. But if you have specific preferences when it comes to location, please check out the website carehome.co.uk so you can type in your preferred location and the list of the care homes will pop up in that website then you can research further um, when it comes to their reviews or their performance through this website okay just a correction so it's not bupa it's bupa the next question is coming from scorpio that's my subject sign so what's the difference between care home and nursing home so for those who are confused with these terms, especially those who are not familiar with social health care, so care home is just a generic term um, for institutions that provide care and support for those people who are not able to look after themselves. So nursing home is a type of care home, but the difference is that there is always an available nurse on site because the service users or the residents of that care home have nursing needs okay so hope it's now clear to you Scorpio all right so let's proceed okay so the next question is coming from your vanity hi thank you for posting this video my son has a mild autism is he qualified to go to the Bennett visa he is nine years old right now do you have an idea about my case 
but he is enrolled in a special education school. Thank you so much. Neurovanity, it doesn't matter if a child has disability or not, as long as they are below 18 and you meet all the requirements for them to apply as your dependent. So it doesn't really matter if they have special needs, okay? As long as you comply with the requirements in taking them or in applying them to join you here in the UK. Next question is from Nicole Tan. Hi, Miss Cora. May nag-offer po sa akin ng job as carer in domiciliary care, 36 hours full-time weekly. But when I talk to the HR, I will need to work I will need to work 40 to 50 hours maximum weekly, not included the traveling time. But including traveling time, it will be 12 hours or more daily for 5 days. Depends how fast I walk for traveling. It's quite long. If I cannot comply these 12 hours daily, can I talk to my employer or complain them to the labor agency if they pressure me to do the job as the full-time work is just 36 hours weekly in my contract? Please advise. So Nicole, this is a major, major red flag. So if your employer force you to work beyond your contract hours and you're not really happy about it, then definitely don't go for this employer. You are only buying to work for 36 hours legally. Working beyond that is your personal choice. I hope they just gave you a wrong message, but if it's indeed true, please clarify it to them, okay? Just in case there's a miscommunication um, between the two of you, if it's not really that clear. But if they said that you have to really work 40 to 50 hours despite the contract says that you're only going to work for 36 hours, then definitely. Thank you, but next, find a, a different employer, I'm telling you. Don't go for this major red flag, okay? Next question is from Siege. Hi po, this vlog is really helpful for me na mag apply ng visa as dependent. I just want to ask po, baka may idea ko kayo sa situation ko now. My wife has successfully applied for ILR status this year from Tier 2 Skilled Worker Visa. I am her dependent under PBS Tier 2 Dependent, but since I have only 3 years dito, dito sa UK, di ako nakasabay sa pag-ILR niya. My question is, paano po ako makapag-apply as dependent niya kasi medyo nakaka-confuse yung application kasi maraming types. May link po ba kayo nung nasa pag-apply to extend ng PBS Dependent Visa? Form, PBS Dependent Visa, Form FLRM, po ba yung ginamit nyo noon? Thank you. So if the primary visa holder is now holding an ILR BRP and of course, since you are not yet qualified to apply as ILR because you don't reach the minimum stay of 5 years to qualify as an ILR um, visa holder, then you can still apply as their dependent. So, um, apply for the visa category PBS dependent. So, I will put in the description the link um, for you to apply as a PBS dependent visa of an ILR um, status holder. This is the same um, visa type that you applied the first time you entered the UK, PBS Dependent Visa. But there are questions in there um, asking, is the primary visa holder who's an ILR status? So you can um, put in the detail the current BRP number of your partner. Okay, so hope that is clear. So check the link in the description. Do not be confused. Do not apply for the spouse visa of an ILR visa holder, okay? Because that will put your number of stay in the UK back to zero. Next one is from Shivani Sharma. Hi, do you have Instagram? I need your help. So please follow me in my Instagram account, maricorejean underscore b. So you would see their photos of my travels, food, whatever that I experience that I love to post and share with you guys. You can find it in my Instagram account, maricorejean underscore b. I have a very low following there, so please follow me on my Instagram account, okay? Thank you. And now we are down to our last question. Well, not question, but 
five questions. So they have the same questions, so I compiled them all together so I can answer them all at once. First one is from Patrick Dominic. Great Ate, do you know any employers presently hiring for senior carer? Okay, second one, Sumaira Ashraf. I am Pakistani working as a nurse in Saudi Arabia since 13 years. Can you please suggest any agency, please? I want to apply for senior carer visa, please. Third one, Zelda Vlog. New subscribers here po, could I ask po where are we gonna get the employer willing to hire overseas? Thanks. Hashtag OFW Chile. Next from S underscore corn. It's a corn, right? It looks like a corn. Hello ma, my profession is, is stitching in India. I have no experience in home care in UK. I am in UK. Could you please tell me how can I get a job without experience? And plus, how can I get here to sponsorship job? Please let me know, ma'am. And last one from Ira Vilches. Thank you for this. It's very informative. Thank you very much. Hope you can also share some agencies where we can search for openings. Or would you suggest it's better to apply directly rather than go through an agency? So through doing my research, through um, Total Jobs, Indeed, and other websites. Um, these are the following agencies that I found or a website that you can apply. But just to let you know, they are prioritizing applicants who are already here in the UK. You know why? Because it's less costly for them. So these are the following websites you can apply for a carer post or nurse post. First one is hcpa.info website. So that is short for Hertfordshire Care Providers Association. Next one is carewellrecruitment.com. Next is bramleyhealth.co.uk. So that is Bramley Health Caring Minds. Next is caringhomes.org. Next is careuk.com. Then we have here jobs.priorygroup.com. Then we have parklanehealthcare.co.uk. Then we have caremark.co.uk. Yeah, that's the last one I have here. Give it a try, guys. Apply directly to their website or send them an email. There will be an email there if you check out their website. So just a piece of advice for those who are aspiring to work as a healthcare assistant or senior care or nurse here in the UK, make sure you apply in a legit agency. There's a lot of fraud happening because of the high demand of care workers here in the UK and there's a lot of opportunistic people around. So be very careful, do your research, and for our um, Filipinos um, applicants out there, um, you can check out the POEA to make sure that this agency has a valid registration and not a illegal recruiter. So that's a wrap of our Ask Core episode 3. So frequently asked questions for carers and nurses who wants to work here in the UK. So hopefully you find this vlog valuable. If you are watching this video right now and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And if you don't want to miss any future videos of my channel, please hit the notification bell to keep you updated. I'll see you soon guys. It's 12 midnight here in the UK and I'm still vlogging and you're not subscribing. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.